Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial, Functional Analysis, Class Number 50. In this video, we learn some theorems. Let us see the first statement. If capital T is an operator on capital H, for which inner product of Tx, Y is equals to 0, for all x, Y belongs to H, then T is equals to 0. In other words, in another words, inner product of Tx, Y is equals to 0 implies and implied by T is equals to 0 for all x, Y belongs to capital H. Let us prove our statement. Let capital H be a Hilbert space and capital T be an operator on H. Capital T be an operator on capital H. We have to prove that our aim is to show that we have to prove that inner product of Tx, Y is equals to 0 implies and implied by T is equals to 0 for all X, Y belongs to capital H. Suppose the first part. Suppose T is equals to 0. It means T is a 0 operator. Now consider an inner product inner product of tx comma y is equals to because t is equals to 0 you can write like this 0 into x comma y which is equals to inner product of 0 comma y inner product of 0 comma y inner product with 0 always 0 therefore you conclude that inner product of tx comma y is equals to 0 for all x comma y belongs to h whenever t is equals to 0 this is the first part. So we assume that T is equals to 0. We prove that inner product of Tx, Y is equals to 0 for all x, Y belongs to capital H. Now let us take the converse part. In this converse part, assume that or let us take let us take inner product of Tx, Y is equals to 0 for all x comma y belongs to capital H. We can show that. Now, we can show that T is equals to 0. The operator is equals to 0. So, let us take inner product of Tx comma y is equals to 0. Now, choose. Now, choose. Y is equals to Tx in the above representation or in equation 1. In this inner product, in the above inner product here, you choose y is equals to tx. If you choose y is equals to tx, then that inner product becomes inner product of tx comma tx is equals to 0. This is nothing but norm tx whole square is equals to 0. We know that, we know that norm x square is equals to inner product of x comma x. So by using that property here, Inner product of Tx, Tx is norm Tx square, which implies as norm Tx is equals to 0. Norm Tx is equals to 0 means Tx is equals to 0. For all x belongs to capital H. So, there may be x to not equals to 0, you get T is equals to 0, since x is not equals to 0. So, we assume that uh, inner product of Tx, y is equals to 0 we show that t is equals to 0. Hence, we conclude that, hence, we conclude that operator t is equals to 0 implies and implied by inner product of tx, y is equals to 0 for all x, y belongs to capital H, where t is an operator defined on the Hilbert space capital H. This completes the proof of our theorem. Now, we are going to prove one more theorem like this. Let us see the statement. <coughs> if capital T is an operator on H for which inner product of Tx, X is equals to 0 for all X belongs to H, then T is equals to 0. Actually, this theorem also similar to previous theorem. But in case here, in previous theorem, we use inner product of Tx, Y other element. Here we use same element. Inner product of Tx, x. So, we prove step by step. Let us see. 
we approach in different way to prove this theorem so let us take let capital h be a hilbert space and capital t be an operator on h capital t be an operator on capital h and let us assume let us assume that let us assume that inner product of tx comma x is equals to 0 for all x belongs to capital h let it be equation number 1 now we can show that now we can show that t is equals to 0 now we can show that the operator t is equals to 0 to prove that t is equals to 0 let us take two elements let us take two elements x comma y belongs to capital h and alpha comma beta are scalars alpha comma beta are scalars alpha comma beta are scalars and x comma y belongs to capital h then obviously alpha x plus beta y also belongs to capital h because hilbert space is linear h is linear if it is linear then obviously alpha x plus beta y belongs to capital h so from equation one now from equation one now what is equation one inner product of tx comma x is equals to zero for all x belongs to capital h instead of x now we have an element alpha x plus beta y belongs to capital h so by applying that equation one to our element you conclude that inner product of t of alpha x plus beta y comma alpha x plus beta y is equals to zero because of inner product of tx comma x is equals to zero i replace the element x by alpha x plus beta y so because capital t is linear you can write you can write like this uh, alpha tx plus because t is an operator beta ty comma alpha x plus beta y is equals to zero now again it can be we can split the inner product we can split the inner product inner product of alpha tx comma alpha x plus beta y plus beta ty comma alpha x plus beta y is equals to zero again it can be split like this inner product of alpha tx comma alpha x plus inner product of alpha tx comma beta y plus inner product of beta ty comma alpha x plus inner product of beta ty comma inner product of beta ty comma beta y is equals to zero now uh, shift the scalars to, uh, from out into outside the inner product we shift all scalars alpha and beta to outside the inner product to outside the inner product so like this alpha alpha bar inner product of tx comma x plus alpha beta bar inner product of tx comma y plus beta inner product of sorry beta ty oh there is alpha also there that's why i am writing sorry beta here 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 in this term beta alpha bar inner product of ty comma x plus beta beta bar inner product of ty comma y is equals to zero so now you observe that again by using equation one what is equation one inner product of tx comma x is equals to zero for all x so by applying this equation one here this term becomes zero 
again this term also becomes zero so what you get finally two terms get zero alpha beta bar inner product of tx comma y plus beta alpha bar inner product of ty comma x is equals to zero let is let it be equation number two which is true for any scalars alpha and beta equation two is true for any scalars for any scalars alpha and beta remember that now substitute now substitute alpha is equals to one and beta is equals to one in this equation two if alpha is equals to one we know that simply one bar is equals to one so obviously alpha is equals to beta is equals to alpha bar is equals to beta bar is equals to one because we are substituting alpha and beta both are equivalent to one so equation two implies inner product of tx comma y plus ty comma x is equals to zero equation number three again now substitute or now put alpha is equals to i beta is equals to one in equation two again remember that i bar is equals to minus i i bar is equals to minus i so again in equation two we are substituting i and one uh, in place of alpha i am substituting i in place of beta i am substituting one so equation two implies equation two implies i inner product of tx comma y alpha bar means i bar minus i so minus i inner product of ty comma x is equals to zero now divide with i divide with i what you get inner product of tx comma y minus inner product of ty comma x is equals to zero equation number four adding equation 3 and 4 add equation 3 comma equation 4 what you get here equation 3 plus inner product of ty comma x here here minus ty comma x so they term they get cancelled you get 2 into inner product of tx comma y is equals to 0 which implies inner product of tx comma y is equals to 0 okay and again choose choose y is equals to tx again choose y is equals to tx if you choose y is equals to tx then it is obvious inner product of tx comma tx is equals to 0 so norm tx square is equals to 0 so norm tx is equals to 0 and finally you get tx is equals to 0 which implies t is equals to 0 so this is our aim because x not equals to 0 this is true for all x means x must be not equals to 0 hence finally we show that t is equals to 0 therefore we conclude that whenever inner product of tx comma x is equals to 0 for all x belongs to capital h then obviously the operator t is equals to 0 this completes the hence proved this completes the proof of our second theorem so these two theorems are uh, slightly same in the one in first theorem we prove the same condition for different elements in the second theorem we we are approaching in a different way for same element keep learning wish you all the best in the next video we learn some another theorems depends upon the these operators keep learning wish you all the best